You're ready? I'm ready. Okay. Shall I? But I see. Shall I do the pre put the presentation already? I just want to say a few words about you. Okay. You can start. Hello, everybody. Uh, today it's uh, the five uh, lecture of uh, Kun van Michelen from Belgium. The lecture is organized by uh, Porcelain and Glass Design Department in National Academy of Art, Sofia. So let's say a few words about uh, Mr. Van Michelen. Uh, he is uh, one of the most interesting and provocative uh, contemporary artists who works by different medias. Uh, how I said, he he's from Belgium, uh, but uh, from 10 years he started to work by glass. Uh, his artistic topics revolves around the themes of the chicken and the egg like a symbol of, uh, of the society, political, philosophy, and um, ethical issues. Van Michelen is an artist who took part several times of the Adriano Berengo project, Glass Dress. This is one of the biggest and most important and successful biennale of the contemporary glass around the world. Uh, three years ago, Van Michelin was a man curator of the glass dress. So he is very close to uh, to the glass already. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? It's interesting that uh, this uh, private enterprise of uh, Mr. Berengo, um, it's uh, really interesting and um, how to say, it's motivated by um, Peggy Guggenheim, idea of Peggy Guggenheim to work with contemporary artists and the most, uh, how to say, the best masters of the glass in the world. So thank you that you uh, agreed to, uh, to make a lecture for us, Mr. Van Michelen. Nice to see you today. So please explain your presentation. Okay. Thank you so much for the introduction. And uh, yes, I uh, I would uh, I like to share. Um, I think I think around thirty years of practice with glass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a little correction that I have to give you, but it's okay. Don't worry. Um, yeah, I, uh, I discovered the island Murano 30 years ago and I was, uh, I was of course, I was taken by the fact of the uh, Berengo factory because that was, that was different. That was um, not the traditional glass that we know from uh, the souvenirs that you can buy, the little horses and all these kind of things. Um, or the design pieces this is this was different so so i had the pleasure to to meet immediately uh, adriano berengo at that time so yeah it's a long journey so i like to take you on that journey let's share this presentation um so i think now we can start mm, i hope so you are presenting that Okay. Can everybody see the presentation? Yes, we do. Okay. So I will start my presentation with this image because it started all from there. This is a walking egg. So what what was important when I came to Murano and I showed this piece to Adriano Berengo, it was not uh, it was not in glass at that moment, but it was in wood. But um, I was asked by a, a, a congress in, about fertility to um, uh, to make something you know which uh, involved fertility, but. 
you know it was not in my um it was was not in my id to um to make something um uh, for something and i had a little egg standing on my desk which was was wood with iron legs and at that time i said um uh, to myself, maybe this X can be a sculpture about fertility. And my idea was actually, let's translate it into glass. So um, when it is uh, translated into glass, it, it carries the philosophy of, um, uh, of fertility because the life is very fragile and uh, glass can be very hard and very fragile at the same time. So in that idea and in that kind of philosophy, I'm, I was working and I'm still working with this kind of philosophy. And I think it's, it's very important. If you look at this piece, I add this, um, this very strong legs, which are in iron. And then uh, they have to carry this, um, uh, this uh, fragile glass egg, which can break all the time. Symbolically, and I think that is very important, uh, symbolically, and here you see the sketch, how that I start to design from a, um, uh, from a, from a collage, uh, talking about this fertility, and bringing it to Murano, and here you see me together with Adriano Berengo, uh, showing some other drawings, but at that time, you know, I was I, I was concerned about this uh, about these sculptures and the fragility of it, and it is actually Adriano who was taking care of it. And I think this is the whole philosophy of my work. Um, it is an egg that is searching uh, thirty seven point six degrees to come out, and I, um, I in life you always have to find somebody who takes care of your work and bring it inside of the world. Um, so my journey started there in Murano and you can say that Murano in one way or another is the birthplace for me as being, uh, as being an artist. So together with the developing of the sculpture and the, uh, and the taking care, I think these are very important things when you are an artist, artist because you know, as an artist, you, you've been also very fragile. So I, I put this image inside of it because uh, in 2015, also the walking egg was uh, selected for the biennial in Venice. And I think that was a very important because that was actually many years, I think 15 years of more after that I created this, uh, this piece of art. So coming back to the existence of uh, the art project. So now I'm going to jump a little bit further and uh, trying to tell you a little bit the content of my work. If I tell you that uh, breathing, fragility, life is very important, uh, you can go and, um, uh, and dig into glass and see that glass is built up of also about the elements of life. Uh, for the uh, water, sand, fire, earth, metal, and this uh, this pieces, you know, you needed to create life. And I think that the work that I'm making and that I'm doing today is always has always these five elements inside. And I created actually now 25 years ago the huge project which is called Cosmopolitan Chicken Project. And what is it? Is it actually cross-breeding chickens around the globe as art pieces? And then I'm very clear about it. This I do in reality uh, because I selected all over the world chickens that represent actually a country. And I started to do this in Belgium because I'm from Belgium on the border between Belgium and France. In Belgium, we have the Mechelse Kukuk, and in France, they have the Poulet de Bresse. And I started in a huge installation to crossbreed them. And why am I doing this? Actually, the chickens, uh, there are only one chicken that lives at the feet of the Himalaya, which is the Red Jungle Fall. And out of that chicken, all the chickens in the world are born by domestication and mutation. 
it's something that mankind has done with this animal and for me that was something very special i started to look at um at these animals to to see what kind of uh what what kind of elements do they do they have and then i discovered that they are always a mirror of a culture for example in france they made the poulet de bresse which is red in the head white in the body and has blue legs so is the representation of the french flag and you can go into the world and you can see in every country that they do it and then i was asking to myself can you actually do this is this um is this allowed to do this with a living animal because you are blocking actually the the evolution and then i started and then i thought maybe the solution is to start to crossbreed so i started to crossbreed and here you see the whole schedule of crossbreeding and until now i'm still crossbreeding these chickens around the globe present them in an installation in museums or in galleries and every time making the statement of breaking boundaries and setting energy free and create new generations so actually i liberate the chicken from the genetics that they are stuck with uh, by manipulation by mankind i think uh, by doing this of course you don't tell anything about the chicken but you tell anything everything about uh, our life and we who are we where are we standing in the world um so the combination of this kind of project with science is very important and in this a uh, picture you see me together with a scientist, the very famous one, Georgia Kasimam, which is a, actually a human geneticist, who said immediately this project can be important to see if there is growing something, something inside which can be very useful for the future. And we see that 25 years later, indeed, the chicken uh, that I crossbreed around the globe and present it everywhere and make all this kind of discussion about globalization, uh, races, cloning, genetic engineer, gives us a chicken that is very sustainable. And that means that it's actually a chicken that has more chances to survive. And I think today, this is also where we are searching for. So, this is actually the content uh, of the work of my work and at the same time i developed actually the same thing in glass so starting from this red jungle fall and here you see uh, the combination of this little chicken i was um, selected for an exhibition which called Beaufort in ostende to create an installation and the installation is actually a celebration of the existence of the of the source of life you see uh, a kind of temple who's standing there in this temple uh, the red jungle fall is living because the red jungle fall lives in the himalaya so i created kind of temple where the source of life is is sitting and next to that is a pyramid and in this pyramid you have all these glass eggs like uh, something that that we have found and still have to etch and I think what is important that they are transparent because with transparency you can you you have the fantasy of that in every egg is something new is something different is something that still has to come out and to etch and with this kind of concept I started in Venice in the studios of uh, Berengo I started to think about crossbreeding glass realities and so I started actually um, in the glass oven with an ID which I called who's different and the ID came through the fact that I was working with two different glass masters one was Pino Signoretti and the other was Silvano Signoretti one Pino Signoretti, and I think you know him because unfortunately he died two years ago. Um, he was the best glass blower of the world. He was very well known for the way that he could uh, make uh, abstract, uh, sorry, realistic glass. And then his brother, Silvano, 
he was well known for making more abstract forms. So I started to confront these two guys in one studio and to create who's different. So 100 abstract birds, like you see here in this installation, and one which is very realistic. So the, the question is actually, what is original? Uh, the one who is translated from reality or the others who are very abstract. So who's different actually? Um, this is a question I think that together they make sense. So in that way, um, it, it, it all started to, to grow in my head and to, and to see, of course, also the crossbreeding between reality and fiction. And that gives me the, um, uh, the installation, artificial crossbreeding, which I presented actually in uh, Miami. And what is important, uh, if you do um, the reality with another glass reality, is that actually the, the idea around this um, is that glass, when it is transparent, you don't know which kind of form it will have in the future. And um, in this installation, you see the reality, the real chicken, and the other is the one that it probably will become. And uh, so it's a kind of future thought. And when you start to crossbreed, you never know what is the outcome. So all of this... Um, uh, of these uh, installations, of course, started with drawings, uh, which are actually uh, also a mix between uh, photographs and, uh, and drawings to give um, the idea of the installations. Well, I just jump from one to another because I tried to tell you the history and uh, how that the things are slowly developing. By having this kind of history, by having the different projects, I started to think about glass crossings and glass realities. So in the glass ovens, here you see me working with uh, Silvano, I started to create always, starting from these drawings, um, a kind of glass um, uh, creatures who are always uh, a combination of two elements. You see here two heads in one body. And when you work in a glass factory, actually, it's also what you have to do. You have to work with the glass masters and you have to become two heads in one body. Otherwise, you never can create something beautiful or something strong. So the cross realities uh, like I showed you in the first installation, who's different, become the first reality of crossbreeding. Here you see Sino, uh, um, Pino Signoretti making the reality chicken, which is based actually on the jungle fall, on the, on the uh, primal chicken that lives in the Himalaya. And the combination is already inside of this work you see that the abstract form is on top of the glass form. So that is one step further than the installation that you saw. Because the installation that you saw, who's different, was still the two elements from each other, and now the elements are coming into one. And that was the first step to say, okay, we're gonna do glass realities. In the second crossing, I went to Ireland in Waterford and created Crystal Salt. Waterford is very um, well known for curving glass. If you uh, look at that factory, they make crystal, of course, uh, which is glass with a lot of lead inside, but I don't have to tell you, you know better than me. But I was using this kind of realities to create, at the end, this kind of bird. And by giving by giving these two elements, you see here the, the body and the wings are created in Waterford and the two other elements were created in, um, in Murano. And that was for me the start of a whole series of works. The Buza, which is the crossing with France. Buza actually means rubbish. 
um, the glass factories in France um, are very known for that. So they started when the glass masters actually uh, finished their job, the students started to make things with um, the leftovers of the glass. And this they call Buza. And again, I made with the leftovers, I made a piece. And here you see the glass over of Murano again with the combination of the different other pieces in, uh, in France. With that idea, I went also to America um, where I created the Claire Obscure. America well known for the neon, I think. And here in this picture, you already see, of course, the neon and all the commercials they're hanging in Times Square. And, and at the end, this is the sketch where you see on one part neon, on the other side is, um, um, is a photograph of Times Square. And that makes, brings the piece uh, together in a, a totally ID of an installation. So slowly you see actually also that all this um, installation of uh, pieces are becoming more installations instead of pieces. Like here, visible, invisible, uh, which is the cross uh, with Sweden. Um, I went to a lab in Sweden and I went to Costa Boda, which I think today doesn't exist anymore. I took some pieces from a lab uh, and think about the fragility. So putting pieces from a lab inside of a big egg, uh, putting water inside in combination with a, with a photograph about fertility, yeah, you create another kind of installation. Fire is the sixth crossing that I did, uh, which is with Taiwan. Uh, of course, you can um, recognize immediately the dragon, but also the chicken head on top of it. And uh, if you go into the tradition of uh, Taiwan, China, the dragon is all, also a kind of chicken. Uh, if you dig into the uh, evolution, then chickens were reptiles, reptiles are dragons, dragons are ch chickens. And uh, if you make this combination, you have a very hybrid sculpture, which I show you in this picture. And with which become later an installation. From Taiwan, I jumped to Japan, and Japan is very, very well known for its glass, which is um, carrying uh, uh, um, uh, uranium. And uh, uranium is um, is actually uranium. yeah, uranium is poison. And for me, it gives me the idea of making the hell of Dante, where the two chicken heads you can see in this sketch laying on the floor with the pipes of glass um, with the, the legs of the chickens on it. And I think this installation was one fire room where the pieces of glass were laying inside. Instead of sleeping, is the eighth crossing uh, with Libanon, um, with, uh, which is born by accident. I went to a glass factory and that was in Libanon. At that time, there was the war in uh, Libanon uh, and very dangerous because Syria was on one side and in the other side you have Israel. And I had to go to the glass factory on the border with Syria. So. I was a little bit in captivity because uh, uh, I only could go with uh, guardians. And I saw there the, the water pipes, the famous water pipes. And in this glass factory, they were making them, um, uh, making these pipes with, uh, with the little glass pieces. And I saw this laying on this bed. And I was taken by it because I said, maybe it could be very interesting. It looks like grenades. And so to create a bed of grenades with an egg on top of it, um, it can be very, um, very scary. And uh, it gives also the feeling that I had at the moment that I was creating it. And I call it instead of sleeping because um, 
in this kind of countries at that moment, uh, it's better to sleep with one eye than with sleeping with two eyes. So the night crossing um, is uh, made with India. So I went back to the um, to this the, the source of the of the primal chicken, and I uh, I saw these uh, temples and pyramids, and I think I thought, why not creating a kind of temple with uh, little glass pieces? And I saw this little chick. I saw in the in a shop and uh, started to translate it, uh, thousands of them, uh, to make uh, one uh, sculpture, which is, um, yeah, which is actually a kind of tower. Iran um, is the tent uh, crossing that I made um, from the tradition of uh, seeing the minarets uh, I, uh, I went to a glass factory in Iran and I created this work. So you have the bottles, uh, which looks a little bit like a, like a minaret, and in front uh, the glass uh, masks from Venice. So it's a kind of, it becomes like a, a, a kind of fairy tale, um, something which is, um, uh, if you think about the, the spirit that comes out of the bottle, and that uh, uh, started to, to live. So the um, next crossing uh, was Venice with Malaysia. Uh, again, uh, finding the culture there and started to translate this in glass. Very complicated. Here, um, it's a mirror of, uh, of, of, uh, of a piece hanging in, uh, in a palazzo. So these glass crossings um, uh, become one big installation and I'm still uh, uh, working on different other countries uh, to go on. But at the same time, of course, I was doing the, uh, the crossing with the chickens. So do you have this kind of two um, projects. They are continuous uh, next to each other. And at the same, at the meantime, there is the Venice Biennial Glass Dress, um, which I'm now uh, curating already for uh, for ten years. Um, and so, two two years ago, I uh, did uh, an overview of uh, ten years um, glass dress. Here you see Adriano Berengo, who is actually the founder, of course, of Glass Dress. And um, it's, a, it's a big evolution because it started in 2009. And uh, I started uh, with my work also there in this, um, in, in the Glass Dress in Palazzo Franchetti. And if you look at this piece, um, which I call the accident, it's still the same philosophy. It's a, a, a real chicken where another transparent chicken uh, has has on the other side. And for me, the accident, it makes a reference to the beautiful accident. The beautiful accident is the Big Bang, the existence of the world. And I'm always saying, you never know um, uh, when that real crossing is taking place because that's transparent. You cannot see, you cannot, uh, you cannot feel it, maybe, and maybe in the future it will, it, it will happen. Um, here you see um, the installation a little bit uh, with, work, uh, with uh, works of Arlon and uh, Cornelis, and then the chicken standing just on the floor like that. So biennial, as you know, is every two years. In 2011, um, I started with another project, which is the um, which is a, a scientific and artistical project with llamas. And I think it's very important that uh, that today you have to know. For Corona, they found uh, through the llama the solution uh, uh, to create a medication. Um, for COVID-19. It was yesterday in the newspapers. And actually, I started already to tell that 20 years ago that the llamas are the new unicorns. And here you see uh, a work that I was created at that time, uh, a little llama uh, that holds an egg 
and on the egg there is a projection of the double immune system uh, that is inside of this uh, little llama. Um, this kind of works, you know, they become very important today. Here you see me working on another installation which was also presented during that time in the biennial um, in glass dress in, uh, in a church uh, in the middle of uh, Venice. The incubator is always part of my work. Here you see the different cages where the glass eggs um, uh, with uh, lamps of, of breeding or hatching. 2013, um, another glass dress which was um, that where that I curated together with James Putman from uh, London from the uh, School of Fashion and uh, the Wallace Collection. Here you see a photograph of the chicken who is there hanging in the middle um, as, a, as a, in a typical Venetian um, uh, mirror and the coat completely made by chicken feathers which are in front standing the chicken that you see in the photograph. So fashion is a little bit uh, in that show because um, James was uh, selecting also in, uh, in that way. 2015 was uh, a breakthrough. I, uh, I created uh, the Medusas, which uh, is actually um, yeah, a Medusa who is, uh, who is carrying the chickens. And I have to make a little explanation for, for this work because it's about uh, myths and medicines. Uh, the Medusa normally is well known for in the Greek mythology that, um, um, that when you look at the Medusa, uh, you become a stone. And of course, it's about the the snakes who are poison and can kill you. But there is also um, a very um, a very important element inside of that uh, uh, legend, and that's the healing part. So the first medication is made by uh, chicken uh, poison, and uh, sorry, by snake poison, and actually the chicken was a reptile, like I told you before when we we're looking at uh, the crossbreeding with Taiwan. And here in this Medusa, I started with making a, a, a totally series uh, of Medusas. I always change the chicken head with uh, the real, um, with the snake head. And then you have a, a, a Medusa, which is an, uh, in evolution. And this one was presented in 2015 together with a whole installation that I made together with Slow Food, which was also concentra concentrated on healthy food. Here you see the big hands in bronze with the fragile seeds inside and a little fragile chicken make, made also in glass. So the fragility of life is, um, is present in the whole installation, which was about seeds, health and, um, uh, and fragility, of course, and how fragile life can be. This is an overview of this installation, uh, which was at that moment presented in Pitui in a museum in Slovenia. The nest of the eggs on water in London. Um, the same year, there was also Genius Lodgi, uh, between natural breeding and genetic engineering, also in the biennial of architecture. Um, you see in this, um, in this work, uh, you see the transparent eggs together with marble eggs, but in the biggest installation, uh, this is a, a completely wall with, um, with transparent eggs inside, and I called it under pressure. And in Ginnish Lodgy, because it was the biennial of architecture, I showed this work because it could be in a building. And actually, there is a building who has now this elements of a wall of uh, 12 meters inside of the building. And here you see the result. 
and it functions like uh, yeah like a wall in a building but at the same time it gives you the id of an incubator that is under pressure you know that uh, in every little egg there is a new life coming up 2017 glass stress um i was presented uh, in the garden of the the franchetti palace you see the um the the big installation here of 13 meters which is stored in actually from broken glass um the the uh, life is finding a way to to grow and to um and to 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 break the fragile scale to come out and to uh, uh yeah and to give also a certain danger which which is in captivity uh, very important was that this installation was made um, from uh, from plastic rubber that uh, rubbish, which was collected from uh, from the province in the province where I live. So the cage was constructed from rubbish, and um, it called protected paradise by warning that um, uh, that the future. Uh, if we go on like this, can be very fragile, and that we end up in captivity. This is by night the big installation in the garden, and you see, of course, the the Grand Canal uh, laying in the background. 2019, um, with all the IDs that are inside, um, I met the people um, uh, through Adriano of the global campus of new human rights and more and more we started to think about creating the pavilion of human rights and this is actually now the big project where i where we're working on uh, which was launching launched in 2019 also in the glass factories and during the biennial of venice um uh, of of uh, the berengo studio and here you see the books of human rights with uh, the fragile pieces in glass on top which are presenting every time a new uh, a new ID, uh, a new outcome. Um, yeah, this is actually the start of finding a way to create the pavilion of human rights in the biennial. 2020, uh, that is uh, last year, I was the curator for um, Unbreakable Women in Glass, uh, where I created uh, the image and where I was also the curator um, of this uh, of this event together with uh, Nadia Romain from France. Uh, this was um, uh, only uh, women they are in the Berengo collection and presented of course in Murano. So what brings the future? Uh, 2021 uh, I'm working on the uh, a huge exhibition in the Uffizi in uh, in Florence, um, and very recently, uh, last year and this year, I started again in the glass house to create a whole series of new works, uh, new works of uh, hybrid an an uh, animals, uh, like here a turtle, uh, which is uh, crossbreed with an ibis are uh, age, um, um, very famous sculptures like uh, um, this one, the crying baby, which is in the Uffizi in Florence, which is not holding a chicken in this, um, in this case, but a leg one. And I call it the cosmopolitan fossil um, because it's also telling a lot about me. Um, when you're a child and you, and you carry something, it will always live with you further. And so are these creations from these new um, sculptures, the combination of marble and glass and hybridity, like Socrates, who is uh, carrying the double-headed uh, Ibis, um, or Cesar, who is um, with an eagle and a snake around his body trying to break out and the medusas and that uh, i showed you in 2015 in the biennial of venice are now getting um, a new form 
where they are completely in glass and uh, where you see the skeletons of the snakes and the chicken are matching together uh, to a new ID. And to end my lecture, um, and to try to give you an idea how complex my world is, uh, in uh, 2018, I started to create La Biomista, which is a new word that I invented and means um, the mix of life. This, um, uh, this place, which is, the, which is actually my studio, is a, a collaboration with the city, a city in Genk, the place where, where I live, um, in Belgium. Um, which is 24 hectares of ground, which is in the middle of the community, and which is on the border between uh, the city and a national park. And I think uh, it, it's, it's quite interesting. So I started to create the whole park in that kind of philosophy. Started in the, in the villa that you see here, which is completely renovated uh, because before it was the, uh, a mine site, and after it was the zoo, uh, 20 years ago, it, uh, it was completely empty. And we started to, to, to renovate this place of 20 hectares of ground. In the whole um, uh, practice of my, uh, my studio, in the 30 years, I developed also uh, foundations. And in these foundations, uh, I started to work with communities. Uh, when I told you that um, the crossbreeding of the chickens becomes uh, very sustainable, we could uh, place actually the chickens also in farms in developing countries so that the poorest people in this world can have a chicken which is sustainable enough to survive in these countries. And this is also in science uh, a little breakthrough. You can discover all these kind of IDs in the villa uh, and around that I built a lot of installations. My big studio, which I'm going to show you uh, the, the photo, um, a photograph, is built by Mario Botta. Mario Botta is a very famous uh, Swiss architect. Um, for example, he renovated um, the Scala of Milan, uh, and he built uh, the Museum of Modern Art in uh, San Francisco. So the big studio that I have uh, starts with the Avery, uh, where is a huge installation. Here you see evolution of a high breed fertility comes from, from outside, where birds live, they are uh, under pressure, and we try to breed them to bring them back into the wild. Here you see the studio. On one side, you have the Avery with these birds who are very fragile, but they are fruit eaters. And on the other side, you have the big cage with, um, with eagles, also mainly extinct, uh, but they are predators. So it's, um, it's a studio between the prey and the predator. And in between, uh, I'm working and the whole team is working there in the studio. It's about the position of the human being. And that brings us through back to, to how fragile life is and how interesting it is to use glass in uh, this kind of uh, philosophy. Here you see an inside of my studio. Again, you see the egg cord hanging here, the glass uh, bubbles that uh, reminds you probably on, uh, on DNA or DNA or some, some cells. And then uh, around this, you see the, um, the creation of life. It's like a, a big bang. It's like um, uh, an explosion of, uh, of new ideas. Inside of the studio, I have a lab. Uh, in the lab, of course, uh, beside of the uh, research that we are doing around the chickens or the llamas or, um, or the, the birds that, that we have, uh, we also invite people uh, to participate in uh, uh, different projects. And as I said, here is the big cage as being a monumental sculptures coming out of uh, the uh, of the building. 
when you leave the building, you come into the park, and in the park you will see the dromedaire, the llamas, and the alpacas, which we call camelids, and this makes the same reference to what I was telling you about uh, the camelids and the breakthrough that, uh, that it can uh, provide us with a medication against COVID. Um, this is, in a few words, I'm trying to um, to bring everything together, which is not so easy. Um, and I like to end with the walking egg on biodiversity, because there is breeding the ID uh, to create the walking egg as the future of now, as uh, as a building, uh, a big building where people can walk in. Um, so, like here, you see the sketches which actually is still uh, in discussion uh, when um, when they told me one year ago just before COVID that they like to go ahead with this building it's a transparent uh, egg that is uh, actually uh, I think like 50 meter above uh, the city in Belgium so all my work is dealing with life and I like to end with this image which it said uh, energy communication and life so energy we give further communication we give further and life sometimes we stop it mm -hmm. and I don't think we have to stop it we have to uh, make combinations and try to find new ways to survive because every organism is looking for another to survive Thank you. Really, really interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, was very interesting. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, our friend Jane just uh, just uh, joined us a few minutes ah, ago. Okay. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> ciao, ciao. I Ciao. just joined you. It was fabulous, Kuhn. I learned, okay, some, thank you. I learned something every time about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is, I'm trying to make a, um, yeah, an overview because it's not so easy. There are two tracks and to bring that together, it's, uh, yeah, it's a hell of a job, but it's, uh, let's see. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful to Jane because actually she's guilty to make uh, to this uh, this presentation. So thank you, Jane. Absolutely. Yeah. You're welcome. Actually, uh, cool. Uh, I love it that you started your presentation with the walking cake and you finished yeah. with the same, uh, same uh, topic, the same yeah. uh, work. I remember when I arrived in uh, Murano, in Berengo studio for first time, and I saw your project in the shelf waiting for something. I'm not sure exactly for what. And mm -hmm. I remember when I saw the transparent, clear, and nice produced uh, glass and uh, uh, strong metal feet which uh, are made. They said, oh, this is brilliant, this is absolutely, I, I didn't have any idea what exactly is uh, your philosophy about this work, but when I saw it, and I love it, that I uh, have so much, uh, how to say, contrast between the two materials. Hmm. So I still remember this moment uh, when I arrived there. That's good. Uh, I have a question. Do you have a favorite edition of Glass Dress and why? Oh, um, yes, I have a favorite edi edition of Glass Dress. I have to, I have to say the moment that uh, Adriano decided to uh, bring Glass Dress completely through, uh, through Murano and to, uh, to let people come to Murano and to see the space uh, where the, the glass is born, um, for me that was, um, first of all, that was brave brave because it's easier to um uh, to bring people to venice it's uh everything is happening there 
but to bring people to the birthplace of glass. I think that was very interesting. And for me, it was very interesting to make the show there and to, uh, and to grab actually in the history of the whole Barango uh, practice. I think, um, I think if you see in this, um, in this quite short period of 10 years glass dress, what kind of works that was made in the studio and which kind of artists were coming there and still coming there, I think it's, I think it's impressive. Um, uh, I'm not sure that, um, uh, that you find another place in the world where that happened in that short time with this kind of energy and with this kind of uh, potential. Uh, it is, um, you know, in, it, it is and making and creating and putting and placing and everything. It's, 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 um, it's an island, you know, which you can compare with paradise, I think. It's um, the, the energy which is, what, what is there uh, can seduce the world in a way that, um, that, that nothing else in the world can do. I'm very sure about that. So for me, the, the last glass dress uh, for me was the, was the best. Thank you. Very interesting uh, answer. Uh, so, which of your work you think it's uh, the most difficult? I mean, for you, um, the, the most difficult work which you made in your practice. Um, huh. uh, are you talking about glass? Huh? I think maybe glass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I will be. Yeah. For, you know, because the most difficult thing of, of, uh, of my work and the practice of my work, of course, is um, uh, when, you, when you talk about life, you know, and you, you're working with life, it's not easy because, um, be, because you always have to take care of, um, um, of, of the life in itself. And to, um, and to progress in a way that you use the most advanced technique that there is. So by reading the genome, for example, of the chicken, you need uh, scientists, uh, the best scientists in the world to do it. Otherwise, you can't do it. So in that way, I can compare this kind of work with the work that I'm doing in glass. If you look at the piece, the accident, for example, there you have these two worlds together. First of all, you have one part, which is a, a real chicken, which is a crossbreeding of different generations, which is carry, um, which is carry different uh, species inside, together with a, uh, with a glass part. That glass part is so complicated to make because it's made by hand, it's not casted, to, to put that together. I think for me, this is the uh, ultimate um, piece that you, that you can make. It's, um, it's a combination of, uh, of two lives, you understand? When you, when you listen to my, my, um, uh, my presentation, these two worlds, on a certain moment, they match together, they melt together, and with that kind of energy, something is happening. And I think that was in the first glass dress presented. And I think at that moment, you are born as an artist. Thank you. Maybe some of the students have some questions. Silence. Hi, yes, I have a question. Okay. It was very interesting, thank you, that you told us so great things about your projects and uh, art. Um, My pleasure. 
I saw that uh, you are, you are working a lot with um, science and scientific things. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the role uh, of um, the artist is strongly connected with um, scientific things and with everything around? What do you think? And also in these days now, in this mm. strange situation? Yeah. Um, very good question. Um, I think I think yes. I think that we need uh, for every profession we need the combination with art, and I tell you why. It's because uh, an artist is never thinking in um, in 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 um, how can I say um, in in one way or another. The artist is always in crisis. That means that he doesn't know what it will bring tomorrow. And I think in every field, like science, of economics, or social entrepreneurship, we need that kind of thinking which is breaking the traditional frames. Otherwise, evolution will not take place. Now I'm making, I'm making a, a, a reference to... Um, what Einstein said. Einstein said, you know, is it my imagination or is it my knowledge uh, which, which brings me further? And he said, without imagination, there is no knowledge. And I think this is exactly what we need. Because in society today, and especially where we are sitting today, I predicted 30 years ago that we, were, we, that we will sit in this kind of situation with COVID. Because of my project with my chickens, um, so it was, a, I'm already six times that I was locked up um, uh, with the chickens. That they, because of the chicken flu, I couldn't move, I had to put them inside. And this is because we are not taking care of nature at this moment. We are we are just doing what we what we think uh, what we think to do instead of thinking that we are living in an environment with with helps us to survive, and we are standing there in the middle of the nature thinking that we can make other rules, but nature is giving us the rules, and by uh, abusing this, uh, we are. Uh, we are coming in this kind of situation because we never thought that a little virus, a little RNA, that is uh, information which is floating around, uh, could kill us or could um, uh, could make the world uh, stop. And I think this is because of not using the Im imagination of evolution. And for the next generation, I would tell, please, take in account that you need the freedom of thinking and the creation of art to come into a new world and to step into a new environment. I think it's very necessary and we need it really on the very highest political level as well. And that's why, and that's one of the reasons that we started to create the pavilion of human rights, um, because in one way or another, uh, art and human rights is connected with each other, has to tell something um, to, to the world, because only written in books and having it in laws is not enough to survive and not enough to live. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. So we have a question from who unfortunately have a technical problems and can't join uh, uh, here in the Google Meet. So maybe you partly answer of her question. This is Alyssa Stuyuva. How do you see the development of uh, glass in the future and what will, would you advise us as a people who decide to work with this kind of material? Um, for me, it's clear. I think, I think that glass is a future material. Um, 
for it's a future material, and I try to tell you why. Uh, what I can see is that the world needs more transparency. That means that, in one way or another, if we build if we build the house before we were building it in concrete with little uh, windows and and everything was was locked from our environment today we have the feeling that we have to sit in the middle of the environment so that's why we create glass windows big glass windows and now we have the opportunity to, to create windows that can block the light they can block they can they can block the cold they can block uh, the heat so there is a uh, there, the technique allows now to use this material also as a wall. So that is one that is one thing, and I can see it that more and more we um, we are waiting we are waiting for this. The material is wonderful because it is um, it is built of these different elements of life. So in one way or another, you feel life inside of the piece because it has these elements of life and we are coming into an area where in art we always want to get as close as possible to the reality although we cannot go to the reality because when it is reality it is nature it is uh, um, it is not art anymore so glass and you can feel it also in my presentation allowed us to create something which where reality can play a big role inside of that and a third thing what is important that you create glass with a team so the team working is something which gives you an engagement to your work and you can always feel it that there is a kind of engagement in that and that was on my my way of looking to glass I made a, and that's why I wanted to tell you, I made a whole journey to come to a definition. I had to go to Taiwan, I had to go to France, I had to go to, to feel that this, that all these elements of crossing and engagement are coming together to create something. So, don't have boundaries, I, I, I tell you, as, uh, as, as, as new generations of artists, there, there are no boundaries in art. There is this freedom. And glass gives you the freedom if you think uh, in another way. And we need actually a new generation of, uh, of artists that work in glass in a way that we never could think that we could use glass in this way. I'm sure that there will, uh, maybe there is a kind of printing system of glass uh, maybe you have to go to the desert to, to catch the sun and to and to make a, a huge printer where you can make directly from the sand a new glass. There are so many elements in glass we are still not discovered. And I want to see new generations to to find that way, to find this new technique, to find this uh, opportunity to show us a completely different world. Wow, great answer. Thank you very much for this answer. Mm -hmm. Super motivated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, and one more question again from Alisa. She asking, uh, was there a moment when you weren't motivated and the realization of project was difficult from this point of view? Um, of course, yeah, because, you know, Working with glass is like working with water. Um, so you st you start with the uh, uh, yeah you start with something which is li which is a liquid, and uh, so in one way or another you don't know where you have to go. So you have to start to to jump into the brain of the glass master. The glass master has to jump into your brain. But you know this is. I never saw it as a as a limitation. I always saw it as an expansion, uh, uh, an extension. Sorry, uh, an extension of, uh, of of my brain. It's like an it's like a new computer, 
and uh, it started to calculate something else and then the outcome became different and then you're surprised and i think art is like this with art you have to be surprised you 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 create something and then you think oh i never thought that it was like this and from that you can analyze what what is actually happened so from the mistakes and the limitation you uh, you create something which is beyond your own limits and that is actually more so you need that kind of frustration if you don't have this frustration you will never create something and everything becomes regular and commercial and then it's over i think so it kills the um, so let me say yes every time that i go to murano i be frustrated <laughs> but in a good way So some other questions? Okay. Okay. Mr. Van Michelen, Thank you so much for your lecture. Uh, mm -hmm. I really, really uh, appreciate that uh, you did it for us. Thank you again. Please send my greetings to Adriano Barengo. Thanks of God, uh, he, he created this fantastic uh, event and wish him uh, good health condition and long life to keep doing this uh, mission because this is not just a uh, event, this is a mission. And mm. yeah, looking forward to see uh, the next projects of you. And same for you, good health edition, uh, condition. And yeah, thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, El Elizar is the, yeah. is the way that I have to spell your name, I guess. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Jane for giving me this link uh, and of course thank you um, Adriano of course for uh, uh, giving the opportunity to create this fabulous works and um, I hope to see you in the future I hope to see you in Murano hope and I will know. bring my greetings to Adriano for sure mm -hmm. yeah okay You're welcome, uh, in our Academy I hope in the future we will find some opportunity to, to work together and uh, you're welcome. So, yeah, let's do. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. And good luck with all of your uh, activities. <laughs> I will. It will, uh, it will be a hell of a year, but it's, it's going to be fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.